Hello info person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to discuss one of the most iconic images from the James Webb Space Telescope, an image that helped us understand how a lot of things in a galaxy seem to evolve over time. An image I'm talking about is of course this, the very bizarre structure known as WR140, which despite appearing as some kind of a visual illusion or some kind of a diffraction pattern, turns out to be a physical object. Here we have an extremely strange multi-layered object that basically produces these massive dust shells around a central star. And though we've known about this object for quite some time now, it was really just a few years ago when the James Webb officially confirmed that this is indeed a really strange, really bizarre layered object. But there's a really important reason we're discussing this again today. And that's because despite this being the only known object to appear this way, researchers have now discovered four more. Which is a really important discovery, confirming the existence of these bizarre shelled objects, but much more importantly, even providing new hints on a possible source of life somewhere out there. And so let's discuss this in a bit more detail, but so let's of course discuss the original object first, in case you've never heard of it before. And so here is basically what it kind of looks like. You have a central star and multiple shells around it, essentially representing a kind of a spherical layer enveloping a star, but obviously of different sizes. And this of course implies that all of these shells are produced one after another and seem to slowly expand away from the star over many, many years. And that's because this is what's known as a wolf Rayet star, a very important class of aging stars with extremely high brightness and extremely high temperatures, very often almost completely deplete of hydrogen because these are basically ancient stars about to transform into something else. And in many cases these stars are so ridiculously bright that they produce extreme luminosity which actually forces a lot of material around the star to continuously expand. This is of course because the light itself produces just a little bit of a push and so because of ridiculous brightnesses these stars very often have a lot of light pressure. And that's because these stars have lost their hydrogen and are now fusing helium, which means that they don't have a lot of years to go before they eventually go supernova. But in this case this is also a binary star, which is how researchers believe these shells are formed. And so here because of a very eccentric orbit, when the two stars approach each other at extremely close distances, the extremely powerful stellar winds start to interact and cause a lot of the material to basically escape the star system and form these bizarre shells. Now that's the basic model, the reality is that there is still a lot of confusion and quite a lot of unanswered questions about all of this, but based on modeling and based on simulations, this is right now what's believed is happening in at least this system. And though the original two shells were observed back in early 2000s, James Webb was able to observe 17 shells reaching out all the way to about 70,000 astronomical units away. And based on the orbit of these stars, this actually represents approximately 130 years of emissions, or these very strange periods of episodic dust production, which surprisingly produces extremely carbon-rich dust particles. And even things like polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are actually kind of important for the production of much more complex organic molecules. Or just to rephrase this, a lot of building blocks of life seem to be all over these shells. But there's also a lot of other stuff as well. For example, a lot of this stuff is also enriched in silicon and essentially represents a tremendous amount of material being released at all times. And all of this coming from the outer shells of the wolf Rayet star, which we know is enriched in a lot of oxygen, nitrogen, silicon and carbon. And all of this being released from the star itself. And as every dust shell forms here, it's then accelerated by the light pressure itself, with the radiation pressure basically causing this dust to accelerate by 400 kilometers every single year. And so eventually this dust starts moving at thousands of kilometers per second. But because the star is so bright and so powerful, the UV radiation from the star illuminates 17 layers, allowing us to see them directly. Naturally though, we expect a lot more layers to exist much much farther away. And well, in the last few decades, several new emissions have already been observed and they seem to happen every 8 years. For example, there was a really big one back in 2009. There was another one in 2017 and we can probably expect one sometimes this year. So that will be 2025. 
But because the shells in this case do move pretty quickly, the distance between each of them is over 1.4 trillion kilometers, or just over 1 trillion miles. So these are definitely really really huge structures. And since this is something we expect to be happening for at least hundreds and possibly thousands of years, this leads us to this somewhat intriguing question. How exactly does this influence the rest of the galaxy? And that's because, over the years, astronomers have long puzzled over extreme amounts of dust that seems to be all over the place, and the dust that we know is responsible for the formation of planets, but whose origin was not clear, and it was also not entirely clear what it was made out of. And so since a lot of this cosmic dust ends up producing new stars and new planets, or because this is the raw material for a lot of star-forming regions, here, its origins and its exact properties were always very important to figure out. And it's the discovery of this particular object that potentially presents us with some really important explanations. Because this is now believed to be the prototypical example of cosmic dust production. But up until recently, this was mostly a hypothesis. And that's because only one such object was known to us. And that's of course until this recent study you can find in a description. A study by Noel Richardson and the scientists you see right here focused on several more of these Wolfraya stars and the carbon-rich dust that's injected into the rest of the galaxy. And specifically they focused on four additional objects that have long been known to be Wolfraya stars as well. WR48A, which is located inside a star-forming region and whose previous images basically made it look this way. WR112, part of a massive binary system whose shells have also been observed previously. WR125, another colliding wind binary with a very massive O-type star companion. And WR137, originally observed back in 1867 and known to be one of the original stars that eventually led to the definition of Wolfraya stars. And as you can see from these new images, it was in these four new systems that researchers once again seem to observe these bizarre shell formations. They're not as easily visible as in the previous image, but they're definitely there. As a matter of fact, you can easily see them yourselves once you zoom in on every image. And so here each of the systems contains several visible dust shells with an extremely similar look, an extremely similar pattern, suggesting a very similar formation history. And suggesting that this is something that seems to happen in a lot of locations in a galaxy. And so because the same pattern of surviving dust shells is observed around these four systems, and because a lot of them contain this regular spacing, confirming periodic nature of dust formation, this basically confirms that many of these binary systems, with at least one star being a wolf Raya star, essentially result in these cosmic dust factories. Regions generating a lot of carbon dust that seems to endure for centuries and potentially produces a lot of ingredients that then give birth to new stars, definitely give birth to planets, and possibly even introduce organic molecules into a lot of different locations. As a matter of fact, one of the hints here is that it is possible that this is how a lot of material was delivered to the solar system and eventually ended up on planet Earth. And so because some of this dust is at least 300 years old, here it's assumed that most of this dust can easily survive much longer and very likely ends up in various star systems. And since we're talking about relatively complex molecules, this by itself is a really important discovery. Although naturally, because here the measurements are still limited by sensitivity, we're not going to know more exactly what's inside this dust until future observations. But the next question in this particular case is, so where exactly does this dust go and what is it going to become later? And intriguingly, one of these stars seems to suggest something super exciting. And this is based on the nearby observations extremely close to one of these stars. This is the WR48A. As mentioned, it's positioned very close to one of these star forming regions. And intriguingly here, what researchers discovered seems to resemble what's known as a parapolite. And propolites are super important, as we've discussed in one of the previous videos you can find in the description. This was recently observed and analyzed by the James Webb and actually became iconic because of this image. Propolites are short for ionized protoplanetary disks. Externally illuminated disks around extremely young stars, with nearly 200 of them observed in the famous Orion Nebula. And in essence, these represent really, really young stars being actively reshaped by very powerful companions 
and the companions that even force the formation of planetary systems. As a matter of fact, in many cases, these interactions with massive partners seem to be exceptionally important for the formation of terrestrial planets and for the enrichment of these planets in various organic compounds. Which is precisely what's being observed here because researchers believe they actually found some of these proplyds in the vicinity of this object. Which possibly presents us with at least one answer already. Some of this dust seems to end up in nearby star systems that are currently being developed in the region nearby. And so because here they discovered at least six separate objects resembling propylids in the Orion Nebula, and objects that are actively interacting with these dust shells, this is actually a super important discovery for our understanding of how planetary systems form and how various terrestrial planets eventually get enriched in certain elements. And so the observation from these four individual stars possibly provides us with at least one very important answer in regards to how complex elements eventually get deposited on various terrestrial planets. And so what started as a tiny dusty clump, somewhat spherical in shape, eventually became shaped and eroded by extremely powerful solar winds and possibly turned into a star system with terrestrial planets, slowly turning into what we now call the solar system. But at least for now this is of course just an assumption based on these somewhat limited observations. These are really important observations, but until we find like hundreds if not thousands of these objects, and until we see how they influence stars and planets near them, we're not going to have any conclusive evidence just yet. But this is still a really important study and a really important first step in trying to explain what happens in the Milky Way. And so until future studies or until we learn something else, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out additional studies in the description. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly. Maybe join the channel membership where you can get additional footage and early access or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.